one of the things I love most about the Squamish community is like the, the crunchy people that make it up. So like me, November at 7 a.m. and pouring rain, and if that's your only chance to ride that day, you can always find someone to go out with you and ride in those conditions. I think I've been in Squamish for like six or seven years now, and it's, yeah, it's been like huge for me as far as, I guess, like finding, finding a community and finding other women to ride with. You can go out and watch someone at a social ride, do a rock slab, and you're like, okay, that's possible. I'm going to do that. And you just become uh, a more well-rounded athlete living in the sea to sky. I really progressed my riding skills. It's just like the Squamish average. You just got to train to keep <laughs> up with your friends. <laughs> The Shoelapse Range is about five hours northeast of Squamish, and the Traverse is a you know, about 20 kilometer high alpine ride through some incredible terrain and then descend back down into the valley on horse trails. If someone's like, oh, I heard about this girl, Laura. Who's Laura? One of the best, like, female riders that I know. Uh, but you, like, wouldn't know it. She, she wouldn't say it at all yeah. until you go on a ride with her. And then it's, like, jaw-dropping. Like, drop into a line and ride it fast and, like, throw in some sassy little slash turn. And you're like, <laughs> all right, this is how we're doing it. <laughs> Megan will send any line. Yeah, she's um, solid, fast. She's up for trying and finding new adventures that other people don't do. Like, she wants to go that extra step and be, I don't know, the first woman to summon a mountain or to ride this route. Yeah, I feel like she wants to go further and farther and explore the, like those other boundaries. Mm -hmm. Angie, she's bubbling energy, she's adventurous. Met very few people who are as stoked to do like a monster suffer fest mm -hmm. in no matter any kind of condition or whatever. She's like, let's go pedal for 12 hours in the rain. You're like, okay, sure. <laughs> Like part of society or like human nature is kind of like always always trying to like make things more comfortable and more convenient and this and that and so you can like have your you know I've got like a nice cozy house in Squamish and I have a job that I really love and it's easy to just get like trapped in that little world and then when you have something like this to plan for it's sort of like it's a bit of a supper fest right like you're out all day um, and it's quite a struggle and you're like working pretty hard and stuff and I think that that like that's like the one dose of like discomfort that you get in that like that week or that month or something like that that I think just like keeps you a little bit more, keeps you honest. just focusing on the simple things of like you're going from point A to point B, you're gonna be camping here, you don't have to worry about decisions or like paying the rent or like any of the little niggles that you may have that all sort of just wipes from your mind when you're out in the backcountry. I find you just, yeah, living for the outdoors, the fresh air and where you're gonna sleep that night.